Okay, before I left, we were learning the dinim of things in the middle of the meal. If you wash for a meal, and then you start eating food during the meal, what do you make a bracha on, what don't you make a bracha on? So anything, we started then, but it was over a week ago. Anything which is eaten to fill you up, basically, which means part of the meal, lalaf is ben asapas, so that's all included in the bracha of hameitzi. So once you make hameitzi, you don't make a bracha on anything else during the meal which is eaten, to fill you up. There's a few exceptions to this. For instance, something which is not normally filling to fill you up, like fruit or dessert, and we'll discuss what type <coughs> of desserts, the difference in the dinam of desserts. So then you would make a brach on it. So like we're discussing what happens just practically like here in Shul. During Shalashudas, a lot of times you serve watermelon, right? So you wash for Shalashudas, you make a meitzi, you eat tuna, whatever else you're eating, and then you also decide to take a piece of watermelon. So even though you're not eating it as a dessert, but because watermelon is not a food which is normally eaten to fill you up, so then you would make a bracha on the watermelon even though you washed. Um, what happens if somebody's having a meal of their washing, but the meal is uh, bread and fruit? So they're having applesauce, okay? Compot, yeah, they're having applesauce and they wash for bread, but this is the meal. They're gonna have bread and applesauce or matzah and applesauce, it doesn't matter. So then the din is like this. There's a whole discussion in Allah what to do, but Paskum and Altareb also holds like this. What you do is the first bite of fruit, the first spoonful of applesauce, you eat together with bread. Then you don't make a brach on the applesauce, and then the rest of the applesauce you don't need to eat together with bread. As long as you began, the first initial spoonful of applesauce was actually done with bread. What? What about popcorn? Is popcorn considered fills you up or not? Popcorn is normally not a dessert. It's more, it's corn. It's popped corn. Corn is something dug on, which is normally made, it's, it's, popcorn is a snack. But the actual kernel of the corn is a corn. So it's not like a fruit. You wouldn't make a bracha on it. Even if they bring it out for dessert, you don't bring it, you know. If the mom is bringing it out for dessert, then that's what you're having for dessert. Yeah, you can make a dumb on it. But, but uh, yeah, but I've never seen popcorn served as dessert yet. <clears throat> Another, what? Potato chips as dessert? Potato chips says, does, if it's mamish, the dessert, and you're not eating a meal of bread and popcorn or bread, and, then you would make a brach on the, on the potato chips. Depending if it's one type of potato chips is adama, another type of potato chips is shakal. Which is which? Huh? Which is adama? You mean nothing? Which is popcorn adama? No, no, no. Popcorn is adama, sure. Yeah. Even if it's just a snack, what is it? It's popcorn. But it doesn't look like corn. What does it look like? It looks like popcorn. <laughs> that, it says in the back, popcorn. It's still had dama in a, in a neighborhood where watermelon is a full meal. Well, huh? No, you said in some, that watermelon is never a full meal. In some neighborhoods, Normally, watermelon is not eaten. Fruits are not eaten. The laugh is by the surpass. That's all. What, watermelon and bread. So I'm saying if that's the meal, then, <laughs> that, then you eat the first bite together with bread, and then you don't have to make a brach on it. Okay, but there's, a, shh, there's another thing that you also make a bracha in the middle of a meal, and that is wine. If somebody drinks wine, no matter when it is. If somebody drinks, washes for bread, so if you drink wine during the meal, so then it is because wine is choshev, you have to make a bracha very pre on wine, even during the meal. Uh, with one exception that I'll mention in a second. What about uh, mashka, whiskey or vodka, whatever it is, so there's a machaikis in Allah if you have to make a bracha on it. Lepel, the minig in the world today, the Alter brings down the minig is, it depends, do people normally drink mashka during the meal or not? If you don't drink mashka normally during the meal, then you need to make a bracha on it. If you normally drink mashka during the meal, you don't make a bracha on it. Well, the minig today is we don't make a bracha on the mashka that you drink during the meal. So let's say somebody washed for bread, Shabbos, you wash for challah, and after the fish, between the fish and the soup, and between the fish and the chicken, you're going to say a lechayim on the... Uh, Glen Livet or whatever. So then, the meaning is you don't make a bracha on it. But wine, you do make a bracha. Now what happens, you have a common case. Somebody is yet to Kiddush and Shul. 
took Shabbos afternoon, right? But you're going home, you're making Kiddush again. Okay, so now you're making the Berpi Agafen before you wash. Now normally we learned that when you eat things before you wash, you have to make a bracha achreina on it before you wash, because it's not part of the meal. Washing covers from the meal on. The reason why Friday night you don't have to make an after bracha on the wine, because en kiddush el b'makim soda, your kiddush has to be in the place of the meal. So the wine is actually a part of the meal because you have to eat the meal. You have to make kiddush where you're eating the meal. So therefore, the wine is actually part of the meal. So therefore, even though you're making you're making kiddush before you wash, but nevertheless, the din is that you still don't make an after bracha on it because it's part of the meal. But what happens if somebody was already ate to Kiddush and they're making Kiddush at home? Just stop. Should be, uh, Ramesh has a chuva about this. Some people have a minik that they make, uh, they make Kiddush again and it's just by a and it's not an extra bracha. So but there the din is, you also don't have to make an after bracha on it. Why? Because that's only, by the way, if you're planning to eat, I mean, drink wine during the meal. If you're planning to drink wine during the meal, then you don't need to make... And that, uh, an after bracha because it's all one continuation of what you're going to be drinking during the meal. And therefore, because you made a bracha before the meal, then you don't need to make a bracha again on the wine during the meal because the bracha you said on the wine before the meal covers it for during the meal. But all the other foods uh, that basically that you... Um, now, another din that we learned also before, what hap- what, what, another case we have to make a bracha during the meal, besides on dessert... It's another scenario. Um, you're not a guest to somebody's house, because that would be a different thing. You're in your own house. And you say to somebody, let's bench. Say, let's bench. Then you decide to eat more. Then you decide to eat more. Anything that you eat, it doesn't matter what it is. The fact that you said, let's bench, knocks off already the first time I see. That finished already, because you said, let's bench. So that concludes whatever the first tamaytzi is going to cover. So now that you're eating during the, now you're eating new food, so you'd have to make a bracha on it, no matter what it is. No, we're talking only if you make a meitzi. If you don't make a meitzi, then you have to make a... Huh? Even though you didn't say Birkat Hamazon yet. Correct. The fact that you said, let's bench, the fact that you said, meaning, in your mind... According to many Paskin, by the way, even if you just think it, you think let's bench, then you have to make a brach. The exception to this is, by the way, that's why I said if you're not a guest. If you're a guest in somebody's house, then you're tailor with das balabas. Then you're really dependent on what the balabas is. Saying. Let's say they serve a dessert and you think, okay, that's it, we're going to bench now. Yeah, you say, okay, we're going to bench now. And then the hostess brings out another dessert. Or whatever, then you don't have to make a new bracha because you're a guest, so you don't know exactly what's going on, what they're going to bring. So therefore, your mind is, whatever they bring is, is still part of the meal. But otherwise, you'd have to make a new bracha. Like, can you do that to the tefillah, like on Shabbos, you want to make more brachas? What? To say, let's bench, okay, you know what, let's have desserts now. And say, oh, not desserts. That you shouldn't do what it says in the bracha, what you could do is before you eat dessert, you could bench. No, but you don't need to, just say, let's bench. No, when you bench it, the better halachically would be then, because then you make a bracha shen tzricha, even though Shabbos you're supposed to do it, but the best thing in that case is to really bench. To really bench. I'll give you another example of this. There's a big shayla, I mean, it's not a shayla, and halacha is clear, but by chassidim, they had another issue with it, and that is, do you make a bracha and cake at the end of a meal, as dessert? Do you make a bracha on cake at the end of a meal? So Shonach, it says like this. Depends why you're eating the cake. If you're eating the cake because you're still hungry, okay, and you're still hungry and you're eating the cake, so then, uh, then you don't have to make a bracha on the cake. If you're full, you just eating the cake because seven layer cake or cream cake or whatever, you know, and you like cake, so then Halacha says you would make a bracha on it. So by Chassidim's Gefirt, that they didn't want to, eat it, it, maybe they did, but they didn't want to admit that they were eating at L'Shem Taiva. So by Chassidim, there was a minig, by many, many Chassidim, that even no matter when they ate cake at the end of the meal, they didn't, they didn't eat at L'Shem Taiva. 
They say, because this is what they're being served, so that's what they're eating. You know what I mean? So then they would make a bracha. What other chassidim used to do, Shabbos especially, if they served cake, they would bench first, and then eat the cake, then it would take off all the shiles. Now, there's another interesting Allah that al Rebbe brings down, that if it's something which is, according to all opinions, what's called Pasa Baba Kisnin, and we're not getting into that now, but basically if it's cake that's made as a thick batter, flour and juice, but not a pourable batter like sponge cake, but a thick, like a Danish, so then, because there are many opinions that say it's a mitzi anyway, so then they wouldn't make a bracha on that type of cake at the end of the meal because that's mamish according to many paskim, it's a mitzi anyway. So that mitzi you said at the beginning would cover that. Okay, but there's besides that. Okay, next. Um, Rabbi, if, if a person does that, where they say, let's, let's bench, and they eat more, so does the, does the benching... The, bracha, the benching covers the bracha chreina. The benching covers it. Benching will cover the new food also? Yes, because you didn't bench yet. Benching covers it. But the bracha yeah, chreina, the mezain, is on a chak or whatever, a or whatever it is, is not covered. It's just like, it's like you have the same thing by dessert. You make a bracha on dessert, but you don't make a separate after bracha on dessert because benching covers it. Benching covers it. The sh- only issue is the first bracha because the first bracha is only there for things that, I mean, is there for things that fill you up. You have to wash also after you no. do the expansion. No, you don't have to wash because your hands, were, you were careful with your hands not to touch things that you wouldn't be allowed to touch. What? If you think it, it's not. You've got to According to it. many Pascha, if you think it, you also have to make a new What's the bottom line? Because usually when I have guests, I think let's bench right after I break bread. <laughs> <laughs> so First of all, it depends bread. who the guests are. Huh? It depends who the guests are. No, I'm saying People you want or don't want. Sure. Right, so I'm saying, you uh, thinking it is enough. But there's, no, they're not in your case. <laughs> you know what I mean? But there's another issue. And what happens... Just like we said, the archim are dependent on, on the host. So the truth of the matter is, a lot of times the husband is dependent on what the wife's going to be serving. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, think we about don't it. Have that you don't have but that problem. In your case, probably. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then, if you have uh, the person, think, you know, his wife is, is the one that runs the show in the kitchen, at least. Mm-hmm. So then it'll be the same thing that if the wife is. Then you think whatever you, you thought that she's finished, but uh, okay. Next is a thing like this. It's called my machrenim. That a lot of people are lenient today, and we'll explain why in a second. But the din is my machrenim is that before you fin- when you finish the meal, before you do bechasamazin, before you bench, you have to do my machrenim. Now the origin of my machrenim, by the way, is because of sakana. My Machrein was the, the concept of Sakana, and it's even stricter. Chamura Sakanta Misura, the Gemara says, sak, things of Sakana are stricter than things of Isin. Isin had to usually use bottle Bashishim, but Sakana is a Machoikis in Paskim if Sakana is also bottle Bashishim, because it's so powerful, the Sakana. In the olden times, they had Melech Zdaimis. Melech Zdaimis means, well, it's like Zdaim. It's a very, very powerful salt that they would eat with. And that, if you would touch with your fingers to your eyes, it would be damaging to the eye. That's how powerful it was. So the Chachamim instituted that you have to have Maim Achreinim. Now, it's interesting. In Halacha, in Shechonarach, a lot of people are lenient about this today also, but in Shechonarach it says there's three waters in a meal. There's Maim Rishonim, Maim Emtsoim, and Maim Achreinim. Maim Rishonim is that you wash before bread. Right? And it tells you time that you wash before bread. Maim Emtsoim, Halacha says, is when you're between fish and meat. We know that Sakonah to eat fish and meat together. And therefore, Halacha says you have to rinse your mouth and eat something between the fish and the meat. So in it says, they also have to wash their hands. Why? Because if your hands are full of fish, and then you're going to eat meat, so then again you're mixing fish and meat and fish. So you, they would actually wash it. The reason why people are mekel today and mayim emtsoyim, between the fish and the meat, is very simple, because most people today don't eat with their hands. 
No, this is what it says in Paschal. Most people don't eat with their hands. Eat with, so your hands are not that filthy. But halachically, by the way, if your hands are very uh, fishy, let's say somebody was eating Harry or, or could filter the fish with their hands, then they would have to wash their hands up then before they would eat the uh, meat or chicken or something like that because it was uh, not, it's, it's not the same sarkona <coughs> as my machrenu. Anyway, so my machrenu is like, my machrenu is a chiv that before you bench you have to wash my machrenu, most mamish because of sarkona and to be continued.